All right, our last speaker, Arya Sharma, is a professor and chair in obesity research and management at the University of Alberta. He is widely recognized as a preeminent global thought leader and voice in obesity prevention and management. In 2005, he spearheaded the launch of the Canadian Obesity Network, which with 10,000 members has remarkably transformed the landscape of obesity research and management in Canada. Dr. Sharma has authored or co-authored over 350 scientific articles and has lectured in more than 40 countries on obesity and related health problems. Dr. Sharma maintains a widely read blog where he regularly posts his ideas and thoughts on obesity prevention and management. And you can follow him at www.drsharma.ca. Today, Dr. Sharma's presentation is titled, Why Obesity is a Disease. Dr. Sharma. Well, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. After these talks, which I must say, uh, left me feeling somewhat depressed. Uh, can I ask you all to just stand up for a second? Yeah, I was actually at, a, at an obesity, so it turns out that sitting around can kill you, and so I was recently at, a, uh, at an obesity meeting where there was standing room only, uh, because there was actually no seating in the auditorium. Uh, there was only 10 people at the meeting. So now I want, uh, now after you've stretched, uh, I want everybody in this section to sit down. You guys can all sit down. All right. Uh, and I want uh, everybody in this section to sit down. Okay, and I want everybody in the last five rows to sit down. Last five rows. Okay. All right, then we've got a bunch of people here. You guys can sit down. Yeah, all of you. Yep, looking at you. You can sit down. Uh, three more. You guys can sit down. Uh, maybe the two of you, too. One, two, three, okay. Why don't you sit down? Okay, so if you look around the room right now, there's about 100 people in the room. If these were all the Canadians, these are the five Canadians who are actually meeting their minimum requirements for daily physical activity. All of you other guys are not even meeting those minimum requirements. So do you know what those minimum requirements actually are? 20 minutes, right? So the five of you, congratulations. The rest are losers. <laughs> or, or actually not, they're gainers. So uh, however you want to look at it. The, uh, so I'm actually pretty, pretty happy to be here at the International Week. I thought this, is, this, is, this event is made for me uh, because I'm a pretty international event myself. Uh, my mom's from Germany, my dad's from India. Uh, and I grew up in India. Um, I spent the first 12, 15 years of my life there. And in India, I was always the little German kid. Uh, when I came to Germany, in Germany, I was always the little Indian kid. Uh, now that I'm in Canada, nobody really cares. So, it's, uh, so I feel really, really at home over here. Uh, I, I did go to medical school in Germany, so I need to warn you, I'm a medical doctor. Uh, what that means is that I don't really know much about obesity at all, because they don't teach you obesity in medical school. I remember in medical school, I think there was two things they taught me. The first one was being fat is not good for you, and if you lose weight, it solves all your problems. That's it. Uh, but then I realized, you know, when I started practicing medicine, that a lot of my, a lot of my patients had you know, weight-related health issues, they had diabetes and high blood pressure and all those problems, so I kind of became interested in that. And the more I got interested in that, the more, you know, exciting I found this topic. Uh, and so, you know, one day I told my colleagues, I said, you know what, I think I want to be an obesity doctor. They said, yeah, that's great, but where are you going? I said, well, I got to go to North America. You know, <laughs> you, you got to go where the action is, okay? Uh, so I came to Canada, I mean, I could have gone to the US, they've got an obesity problem there. Uh, it's even slightly bigger than ours, uh, but I got an easy solution for those guys. You know, they could uh, uh, they could just go metric, <laughs> right? You know, 300 pounds, now it's 140. Easy. Um, no, seriously, it is a big problem. Now, since coming to Canada for, over the last 10, 15 years, this is not just a problem in North America. We got obesity all over the world. I was recently, I was in, I was actually in Switzerland. I was at a convention there. Uh, on obesity is like a Geneva Convention on, on fat. Um, and uh, even Switzerland has an obesity problem. You know, you, we, don't, we don't think think that of people in Switzerland, but, well, you think about it, I mean, they got chocolate, right? That's a problem. Uh, cheese, that's the other one. So I was actually recommending to them, you know what? Uh, they're trying to come up with low-calorie cheese. I said, you know what, just make the holes bigger. It's, uh, <laughs> 
you know, you got easy solution for you. India. I was in India just recently giving a talk there for the Hindustan Times. This was a big leadership summit they had there. Uh, and they'd asked me to speak on obesity uh, because India's got a big obesity problem. Um, and it's growing. Uh, we have, uh, what, 300 million people who are now overweight or obese living in India. That's almost as many people as in North America. So uh, it's a huge problem, uh, which really, again, shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, you know, when the, when the favorite dish actually has the word butter in it, uh, physical activity, that's not, uh, d does anybody know the last time a guy from India won a gold medal in the Olympics? It's, it should be, it's an easy question because, the, because they've only won one gold medal ever in the Olympics. Anybody know when this was? Like it's a billion people, right? One gold medal. Well, it was in, in 2008, Beijing. What was the sport? 10 meter men's air rifle. The guy only had to move a, move a finger. That was it. <laughs> That's the competition they won. So they're, they're not big on physical activity, right? Uh, so they have a problem. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the deal. Uh, and it's not just a problem. So it's not just that we have obesity all over the world. So we got North America, we got India, we got lots of places. But here's the, here's the really interesting thing. And I don't know what your thoughts on this is. One of the, one of the biggest problems, actually, interestingly, is pet obesity. Pets are getting bigger. Uh, there's now an American Association for the Prevention of Obesity and Overweight in Pets. I like the acronym. It's APOOP. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's, there's no diet dog food. It's food for your husky husky. You know, for the... Uh, <laughs> For, for the nothing fits you shih tzu. Uh, it's, you know, there, there's, there's a whole line of, it's a whole industry now. There's a whole diet industry for, for, for pets. Zoo animals are getting bigger. So there's something going on that's, you know, that's not easy to explain. Uh, when we think about why this is happening, I mean, there's a couple of reasons that are, that are pretty obvious. And it starts with genetics. Right? There's no question that genetics is sort of the root of the problem. Uh, because uh, in my clinic, you know, I look at my patients, they all come from large families. Like everybody's large, like mom's large, dad's large, uh, you know, grandma's big. Genetics pretty much primes the gun. Uh, in fact, body shape and size is almost as heritable as, way, as, as body height. We think of height as being something that's very heritable. Well, so is body shape, and interestingly, so is body size. Uh, so genes are part of it. Now, one of the things that we are learning about genes is, because a lot of people say, ah, oh, come on, you know, this can't be the genes. Like, genes don't change in, you know, 20, 30 years. Actually, they do. Uh, there's a whole field now called epigenetics, where we study how genes are modified by the environment to which they're exposed. And that happens rapidly. Uh, and a lot of people now think that the whole childhood obesity epidemic actually starts in the womb. By the time the kid's born, he's already obese. He's already genetically programmed to be obese. And there's evidence now showing that a lot of people today are much more prone to obesity than they were before. So the genes actually do change. And that's part of the problem. Now, why have they changed? All kinds of theories about that. One of them is moms are getting older. People don't have kids at 18 anymore. Right? Now, now the average kid you have is at 27. The body of a 27-year-old is not the body of a 19-year-old. Already the intrauterine environment has changed. Physical activity is different. Lots of things are different. Uh, but we also know that without the genetics, people are very, very different. So the Mayo Clinic did a study a couple of years ago where they took a bunch of people, they put them in a room, and they actually fed them 1,000 extra calories every day. So they measured what they needed and gave them 1,000 extra calories. Now, you'd expect everybody to gain the same weight because they're all eating the same extra 1,000 calories. Well, guess what happened? Some of those guys gained 12 pounds in six weeks. Some of them gained two. And they're all eating an extra 1,000 calories. And that's why this whole calorie business is not simple, right? People often say this obesity stuff, you know, this Dr. Sharma guy, he makes things too complicated, right? It's all energy, ener energy in, energy out, easy stuff, right? Uh, it's not. See, calories in, calories out works in physics. It doesn't work in physiology. You know what the definition of physiology is? That's biology messing with physics, right? Uh, people are very different in how they actually metabolize those calories. Some people can eat pretty much whatever they want and hardly gain weight. You know people like that? Yeah, I call them the mutants. <laughs> and then you got guys, they walk past the buffet, they gain four pounds, right? 
there's a huge difference in the susceptibility. Some people are much more prone to gaining weight than other people, and we, but we never accept that, but in fact, it's actually true. But then there's lots of other reasons that people put on weight. You know, and it's not just the fact that you're constantly surrounded by food, uh, but there's things that you don't think of. Uh, lack of time. When you think of the fast food problem, it's not a food problem, it's a fast problem. See, that's why the hamburger comes pre-chewed. <laughs> right? Because if McDonald's took 40 minutes to serve a hamburger, nobody would go there. Nobody has that kind of time. Right? We're all time-starved, convenience food. The entire industry exists because people don't have the time or don't take the time to actually spend you know, on cooking meals and eating them. Lack of sleep its another one. One of the things that we've, actually this is one of the hottest areas of obesity research now is lack of sleep. We all don't sleep enough. You take animals, you sleep deprive them, they get fat. Same food, same everything, they get fat. Our kids are not sleeping enough. You ask me, you know, who started the obesity epidemic? Edison. Why well, shouldn't have invented the light bulb? Because that's what's keeping us awake. Electronics are keeping us awake. All the digital technology is keeping us awake. Right? And sleep deprivation, profound effect on metabolism. Stress, multitasking, depression, anxiety, medications people are on that can make them hungry all the time. There's so many reasons why people put on weight. One of the most exciting areas of obesity research right now is, uh, is interesting, and you might have read about this. It's, it's the bugs that live in your gut. Anybody heard about that? Gut bugs? Yeah, it's a huge area of research now. I got colleagues in Holland that just did a study where they actually took a stool sample from a skinny guy, put it in a capsule, and gave it to a fat guy. It's called a fecal transplant. Yeah, I was talking to them. I was asking, you guys ran out of shit to study or why? I mean, like, <laughs> who does this? <laughs> uh, but they, it actually changes metabolism. Right? Now they're trying to develop that into some kind of a new diet pulse. I can already see this, you know. So, you know, I can see the ads going. Did you take your stool capsule this morning? <laughs> Maybe there'll be a do-it-yourself kit. I don't know. So I was talking to colleagues in India about this. They said, oh, you know what? Fecal transplants. Oh, we've been doing this for 5,000 years back in India, right? We still do it, just have a salad. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's changing, so maybe that's why they're having the obesity epidemic, right? Things are getting cleaner, who knows? Uh, it's not easy. So there's a lot of reasons why we have this obesity epidemic. The problem is we don't have any solutions. We got exactly zero solutions for this. Because the biggest problem with obesity is that once you've put on the weight, that's the weight your want, body wants to be at. We know people who've lost weight. I mean, do you guys know, know anybody who's lost weight? A lot of weight? Yep, they, they exist. But I can tell you that out of 20 people who go on a diet and, or start an exercise program, 19 of them will lose the weight and put it back on. So the question is, what is this one person doing who's, who's successful? Now, we know what that person is doing. Because uh, I, got, you know, I got colleagues in the US, and they run what they call the National Weight Control Registry, which is interesting. The US has a weight control registry. They don't have a gun registry. <laughs> they have a weight control registry in which they ask these people, you know, what are you doing to keep the weight off? And we know what they're doing. And they're doing a lot. I mean, these guys go from being couch potatoes to marathon runners. Right? They, go, they go from you know, being guys, fast food junkies, to being paleo vegans. I don't know how that works, but whatever. Big changes. Right? It's not easy. And they have to work hard. And losing weight is like pulling on a rubber band. Like if, this is, you know, if, if for whatever reason you get to be 250 pounds, well, that's not what your body wants to be. And so you're 250 pounds. And you can diet, and you can exercise, and you can, you know, you can get your stomach stable. Go to see the surgeon. But you stop doing any of that, guess what happens? Weight comes right back, right? Get your stomach stapled, lose 100 pounds, keep it on for 10 years, go back to the surgeon, say, can you unstaple my stomach? Guess what? Weight's back. There's no cure for obesity. And that's the biggest challenge. We've got treatments, they're not great, but we don't actually have a cure for obesity. And so that's one of the big things we're working on because, you know, 
Prevention is important, and let's do, all, let's do everything we can about prevention. I've got no idea how to prevent it, okay? I haven't seen anybody do it yet. Uh, lots of theories on what you could do. I haven't seen any of them work yet. But even if we could, right, if I can snap my finger and, nobody, and everybody who is now not yet obese is not going to be obese ever, well, we're still left with six million obese people in Canada. What are you going to do for them? Or what are you going to do for the almost one billion people around the world now who are overweight and obese? We don't have treatments for any of those people. They're going to stay fat for the rest of their lives with all the problems that they have. So finding a treatment that actually works for obesity is one of the biggest challenges, and that's certainly one of the things we're working on. And so it's a two-pronged approach. Let's try to figure out exactly what's going on. Why do we really have this world global epidemic? And I know there's lots of interesting theories. Then let's figure out what can we actually do to change some of those things to prevent obesity. Again, lots of interesting theories. But on the other hand, let's also find some way to actually help people who have obesity because a treatment that only works for one out of 20 people is really not a treatment. And that's, that's what we have right now. And those are the challenges. And so any of you who, want, who have an interest in this topic and think you know, this might be a career you want to get into, uh, you know, lots of work to be done because I, this is not a condition we can cure. And let me just finish with this little piece of advice, or not advice, it's something you realize. Even running for the cure does not cure obesity because you're going to have to keep running. Thank you.